Let's get this session started here. CP the Franchise checking in from Florida. And, and the New York Knicks lost a tough one, man, to the Miami Heat last night. 109-99. to Tough night at the office uh, for Jalen Brunson. Yeah, Brunson finishing with 20 points, 10 assists, and just 5 of 18 shooting, 1 of 6 from downtown. Knicks just couldn't get much offense going in the beginning of the game. I didn't like the way that they started the game. I thought Miami played like the more desperate team. Definitely played with a much more of a sense of urgency. You could feel it. They want it. They know that this is now April. They're in the dog, uh, the, the final stretch of the season. And so Miami's looking to gain some ground now. This is when Jimmy starts to, uh, to, to actually start playing ball. And the Rozier factor, I told y'all, man, the Rozier factor, this is not Kyle Lowry all over there again. Rozier makes them, I think, a little more dangerous. And he killed us last night, man. 34 points to Terry Rozier. He couldn't miss last night. 10 of 15 from the field. 8 of 11 from downtown. Terry Rozier, man, absolutely destroyed the Knicks. And and, and that, that I think that was a big factor in this thing. A bad start and just not being able to contain Terry Rozier whatsoever. And so before you know it, Knicks were facing deficits, double-digit deficits, and had to climb themselves out of a hole. You just can't keep relying on that. You had bad starts against the Spurs. You know, uh, you can't keep relying on, on coming back. Those fake Nick comebacks are just not going to work, especially when you play the better teams. So I did not like how the Knicks came out. But nevertheless, they made things interesting in the fourth quarter with a nice run to get back in it. I think they, they tried to cut the lead to about four. But then again, Scary Terry put the knife in their back and, and the dagger to, to really end it. I think he, he finished with like a 12-0 run to wrap up the game. So the team, the Knicks have now lost three in a row. They're 44 and 31 on the campaign. And as a result, guys, they dropped to fifth in the uh in the Eastern Conference race. So this was a big, big matchup uh, on all accounts with, with Miami on the Knicks heels, with Orlando on the on the Knicks heels, and the Knicks trying themselves to, to get out of a rut. But you know, you, you look at the um the box score here from this game. Knicks shooting 46% from the field. I thought I thought a lot of that was based on their second half play, which was much more spirited. They did have a 30-point fourth quarter, third quarter and try to climb back in the fourth. But, you know, only shooting 35 from three. A lot of that was DiVincenzo misfiring. Uh, Miami, conversely, sh shooting 44% from three, damn near 45%, and winning the rebounding battle. I thought this was key as well, man. The Knicks coming into this game, one of the best rebounding teams in the league, also on the offensive glass. Uh, Miami, good job of keeping the Knicks off. Jigga Man Porto, salute. Oh, dog, what up? Miami did a good job of keeping the Knicks off the glass. So when you think of it that way, the Knicks really were unable to create many advantages against this Heat team. And that was part of the issue. Another part of the issue, man, you can look at DiVincenzo's stat line and say, okay, 31 points, 11 to 21 from the field. Shot 50%, 6 of 15 from 3. But I thought in key stretches, especially early in that game, he was relatively ineffective. Didn't necessarily like his shot selection. And part of the problem for me with DiVincenzo is that he's a very limited creator. You know, he's a very limited shot creator. And so for him, it's threes and nothing. Now, second half, he turned it on, which was good. But overall, you know, his lack of shot creation sometimes can put this team in a little bit of a bind, especially if Brunson isn't, had, doesn't have it going. And I thought the Heat, as they do, did a good job of putting a lot of pressure on him. They had Caleb Martin guarding him. Sometimes it was Jovic, Jimmy. And so they're able to throw some relatively decent size and put a lot of pressure on him. And Brunson talked about the fact that Look. 
All right, we back in it. We back in it. I think I lost the stream just for a second, but we should be good to go. So, yeah, so Brunson talked about the fact that, look, he was a little bit under the weather. And, look, it's certainly possible. The This is the final stretch of the season. I think this, t- this team on a whole is looking a little bit tired. It's a shorthanded team. You know, like on one hand, yes, you can't keep using that as an excuse. As Josh Hart said, everybody's got to man up and play. But on the other hand, you can see it. Where with no Julius Randle, with no OG Ananobi, this team can be very limited and one-dimensional if they're not clicking on all cylinders. And what I mean not clicking on all cylinders is, you know, you don't have Josh Hart doing his thing. Brunson is not playing at his MVP caliber level. DiVincenzo can get uh, tricky in terms of his shot selection. So at times, they just seem like a, a burnt-out group. And look, th- it's an issue for this team. There's no way to slice it. You don't have good news on Julius Randle. Still hasn't been cleared to play. OG Ananobi now is dealing with elbow tendonitis. So I think the OG situation, uh, he's looking like a game one, being ready for game one of the playoffs. I don't see any ramp-up time for OG as they try to get the inflammation down, and for Julius, it could be 50-50 right now. Shout out to OD1 in the chat. Fax Mula says, shorthanded, but at the same time, we have a bench of at least four DMPs, and two of them might actually be useful at crazy time. I'm, I'm not so sure, man. I'm not so sure. We got to understand this. There are consequences to trades. When the Knicks made the OG trade, it put a hole in the bench with quickly being gone. We know this. McBride is filled in admir- admir- admirably, absolutely. Uh, but you then made the Dallas, the Detroit trade, bringing in Burks, bringing in Bogdanovich. Now, Bogdanovich played better last night. I thought he had one of his better games as a Knick. Like the shot selection, he was more under control, and he took advantage when he had the opportunity to. Bogdanovich had a good game last night. But on for the most part, those guys have been ineffective. And so the injuries on top of inconsistent play from your role players, on top of ineffective bench, is going to put this team in a bind. But like I said, there's consequences to your choices. Remember, the Knicks could have went out there and gotten anybody at the deadline. They could have gotten DeJounte Murray. They could have gotten Scary Terry if they wanted him. Who went out there and killed them, right? Imagine Terry Rozier as another guard off your bench. They could have gotten anybody. They chose Burks and Bogdanovich to keep their cap flexible for next season and to be able to make further moves. So as a result, it's going to put a strain on the team because they decided not to put more chips in the middle of the table and really fortified his team. So these things have consequences. Now, in the long term, maybe it works out, right? Maybe they use the Bogdanovich contract. They go to Cleveland, go get Donovan Mitchell. You got the Rolls-Royce backcourt, and they're killing. So maybe we can look in 2024, 25, and say, hey, what a great trade this Bogdanovich trade was because it was a stepping stone to getting to where we need to be. But for right now, it's putting this team in in a bind. You know, it, it's it's really putting this team in a bind. Now, the uh, the the foul complaining with Tibbs and Brunson. Look, yes, he's getting fouled. It's been an issue all year. But listen, we're getting ready for the playoffs. Get ready. What we saw last night from that Miami Heat defense and the intensity in which they played that game, you could expect it in the playoffs. If these two teams, this is why I don't want to see this team in the playoffs. As much as I hate admitting it. And I, you know, I'm talking trash to Miami Heat fans. I was trying to hold it down for us last night. I was really trying to hold it down for us last night. But it's a tough team, man. They're a tough defensive team. And for the Knicks right now, with their glaring weaknesses, it's a tough opponent to have to start off the playoffs against. So, 
we just got to understand that it just is what it is with this team. It's a shorthanded team in many respects, and they're just going to have to roll forward. The problem is, is that, you know, as you see Jimmy Butler starting to ramp up, he's had time to kind of coast and chill. The Knicks don't have that luxury. Jalen Brunson does not have that luxury. He has to be MVP, pedal to the metal, until this thing is over. That's that's going to be the ca- the question here. Can he can he do it? Because at this stage of the game, you, you're looking to, you know, get guys a little bit of rest here and there when you can. Maybe take a night off. Knicks can't afford to do that. They cannot afford to take a second off. Because let's take a look at the standings here. Salute to everybody in the chat. CP the franchise on the Bleacher Report app. Checking in from sunny Florida. All right, let me uh. Let me get the standings up here. And as you look at it, yeah, you know, they were trying to chase that two seed. They're three games behind the Bucs. I don't think that happening with seven games left and a game against the Bucs. Um, but with that loss, they go tied again with Orlando. Remember, Orlando owns that tiebreaker. So Orlando is now the fourth seed. And look who's in the rearview mirror, the Indiana Pacers. One and a half games back of the Knicks in the sixth seed. If they finish tied, guess who drops to six? So this is where those regular season matchups matter, man. Tiebreakers. Got to factor in tiebreakers. You got Miami right here. Miami's two games back. And the process is back with Philadelphia. So the Knicks have no time to take a break. They've got to get it together and get it together fast. Because playing is not out of the question with seven games left. They've got to get it together, man. Let's take a look at the remaining games of the schedule. CP the franchise on the Bleacher Report app. Take a look. Because it starts tomorrow. Against the Sacramento Kings. It starts tomorrow against the Sacramento Kings, who's going to be looking for revenge. Sacramento themselves have something to play for. Then you go to Chi-Town. Then Milwaukee. You know, you got a little three-game stretch, which is weird. They do at Chicago. Then they got to go to Milwaukee and come back to Chicago. That's a little weird mix. Very weird mix. But tricky. It's tricky. Then they go to Boston. Not sure if Boston's going to be playing their starters or what. And then finish home versus Brooklyn. Brooklyn looks like they they those guys are already in Cancun, so not really worried about them. And then home against Chicago. So the Knicks cannot afford to take a step back here. They've got to go pedal to the metal. And as Josh Hart said, this is the team. This is the team. So what are we going to do here, man? What do you guys think in the chat? I'm Martinez, 37. Brunson looked gas yesterday or just Miami Knights got him. Hey, you might be right. I don't know, man. They, they got a club in the arena. I mean, who knows? Who knows what these guys are getting into, man? They got a lot of uh, of things to distract you in that arena, but good time. We had, we had a great time. Shout out my guy, Jay. Uh, me and my guy, O-Dog, was in the building. He was in the mix. Shout out to all the Knicks fans that, uh, that pulled up on us at the game, at the pregame watch party. Was uh was crazy, of the pregame happy hour. Rather, shout out to everybody that came through to uh, Black Market Bayside. Had at least a hundred Knicks fans in there. A lot of love for KFTV. A lot of love for uh, CP the franchise, Alex, and and just overall community vibes. So shout out to everybody that pulled up. But yeah, man, it's TM says Magic is a team I want. They can't shoot, but their defense is good, man. Their defense is good. And so that's another team who Knicks are going to have to shoot it from three, shoot it well from three. This Magic team knows how to get it out the mud defensively. And I'm very interested to see uh, Paolo Boncaro. I'm very interested to see how he plays in the playoffs. That's going to be the next step in the evolution of his game. Fax Mula. Lash, what's good, Lash? Fax Mula says uh, CP was alighting off last night at that arena. I don't know. It was my first time there, so I wasn't sure what, you know, what to benchmark it against. 
My first time there, I could see fine. We had great seats. You know, as the scotch was flowing more and more, vision was getting a little blurry, but everything I saw was, was, was pretty good. Facts, Moo, I can't believe we're actually here. Seven games. Wow, time flies, but unfortunately for us this way, yeah. It's a roller coaster season, man. It's a roller coaster season. Right now, this Knicks team just has to, they, they have to grind. They got no choice. Facts, Moolah in here. Heavy buddy, Ty. Got to give it to Spo, though. Yeah, great coach. Great coach. This is the team I do not want to play in the playoffs. Salute, man. Chicken Man Porter. A tired Devo is not excited to watch. Exciting to watch. Yeah, and CJ78, Devo's been chucking lately. Yeah, I don't like... I don't like uh I, I I I don't like the the shot selection sometimes with DiVincenzo. I, I I just don't like it, man. TM says uh we showed a pick of you and fans from the meetup on the show and gave snaps to gave snaps to Okay. All right. Nice. Nice. That that's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, I haven't seen. I only saw like a couple a couple pictures. But uh, TM, drop it in the Slack if you if you had another another picture that uh, that I might not have seen. But yeah, we took a lot of pictures with the fans yesterday. Uh, great meetup. Absolutely great time. J Rose seven one two says finally working. Listening in on the grind. Yeah, salute to everybody in the grind. If you guys are on the grind, throw a hashtag grind in the chat. Good game from McBride last night, though. I, I did like how Deuce looked. His, his shot making was a necessity. If Deuce wasn't hitting his shots, especially early, this thing might have been, it might have gotten ridiculous. If, if Deuce wasn't knocking down those threes, this thing could have gotten out of hand. Deuce McBride, 24 points, 9 of 16, shooting 4 of 8 from the field. Good job by him. But, you know, iHeart was really nullified, man. Neutralized. Bam had him on lock. Four points. Two assists, three steals, only 18 minutes. He did get Precious in there. I thought Precious gave them some good effort, especially in that second half run. And then Mitchell Robinson coming back, I thought was a positive side, even though he wasn't really, uh, you know, impactful. Uh, I thought it was good to see Mitch get back out there. Shout out J Martin 05, salute on the grind. Fax Mool on the grind. Gamble, salute. Lopez, my guy Lopez in here. Salute to TM. CJ says everyone is going to play Brunson uh, the way Spo does, put an athletic wing on him. Yeah, others need to step up. Yeah, that's going to be the play. Now, Jalen Brunson has shown, as stars do, as superstar talents do, uh, that, you know, on some nights they're going to get the upper hand, and some nights that defensive style can weigh you down. And it's not just one guy. It's a lot of attention coming off of the wings. That is why it's important, especially early, for you to be knocking down your shots, you've got to space the floor for him to, so that the defense has to respect your shooters on the outside. It's one of my issues with having hard out there sometimes. And then, you know, if DiVincenzo's not firing, that paint can get very, very small. Torn ACL was an April Fool's. I didn't hear anything about Torn ACL. I'm not sure who you're speaking of. But yeah, no, CJ in the chat has, definitely has a point. And, you know, with Orlando, they've got a lot of guys they can throw at Jalen Brunson and a lot of good, scrappy, young defenders that are going to be wanting to rise up to the challenge. They don't want to be the next contestant on the Summer Jam screen. So they got to play Orlando in the playoffs. You got guys like Anthony Black, uh, Suggs, that they can put on, maybe even Jonathan Isaac, maybe. And Jamal Mosley knows Brunson. So I think that's an interesting matchup. Yeah, Orlando's going to be inexperienced. But when you talk about putting longer, more wingspan, athletic players in front of them, it could be tough. could be a tough, tough night for them. Words of post as Butler was on him a lot in the playoffs and he still cooked him. Yeah, that's true. I thought, I thought the only two players that saw that Miami Heat defense last year was or three players was Brunson, Jokic, and Murray. That's it. So yeah, like I said, you know, he's gonna have nights where, yeah, he's gonna be red hot. 
and and be knocking down those shots, but he's got to work. As you see, he's got to work for it, man. And with nobody like a Julius who can command more attention and that he can play off of, I think he has to work even more. And that becomes it's it's that's why you get so tired and burnt out. You got to carry the team. There's nobody assisting him on 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 his shots, so he's got to do everything. CJ Josh Hart got the shooting yips. He's not pulling the trigger. I told y'all about that, man. I told y'all about that. It's a concern. No, he's not a he's not a shooter, but he's got to take shots. He's got to step into his shots with confidence, man. He absolutely has to take shots with confidence. One of three last night. He took three shots. It's hard to win that way. Now, like I said, McBride certainly carried the load for the team. Pause. But Hart has to be that guy. And the thing is, is that we know his strength is playing fast and his ability to make plays in the fast break. He wasn't doing that last night. Couldn't do it last night. And the Knicks, uh, the heat controlling the boards, I thought was part of it. I mean, look, let's look at the numbers. Josh Hart last 10, shooting 30% from the field, 14% from three. Now, I mean, those are ghastly numbers, according to Clyde. TM says Hart regressed badly. I just think, I just think that's just who Josh Hart is, man. He's 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 an erratic offensive player. Which is why he's a great Nick, <laughs> because his his contributions are mostly based off of the hustle stats, getting on the boards, getting out, transition, the deflections, playing tough, playing physical, and then yeah, when he's knocking down his shots, he becomes a really really impactful player. But when he's not, that's when things become tricky. And I think in the playoffs, when you're looking at attacking the Knicks' weaknesses, I don't think th these guys are even going to guard him in the half court. Facts, Mule, I wish Jericho Sims was acting more productive for this team. You, you're getting enough. You got enough centers, man. Sims, Sims is my guy, but you got enough from the center rotation right now where – you know, he, I, I don't really think they need Jericho. They need more wings. <laughs> they need OG. They need Julius Randle. Uh, that's point blank period. I'm, I'm not worried about the fourth string center right now. Definitely not worried about that. But shout out to Jericho. Um, you know, maybe he gets an opportunity, whether it's with the Knicks or somewhere else. Shout out to him. But it's just tricky, man. Like, let's look at. Let's take a look at Josh Hart's shooting numbers. So to everybody in the chat and the Bleacher Report app, CP the franchise here, reporting in from uh, Florida. Okay, here we go. Yeah, let's take a let's take a look at Josh Hart shooting numbers by the month. I mean, he had a good November. He's at forty six percent from the field, only thirty for, from three. December is where December is where he really started to take off. Forty six from the field, thirty seven from three. January, 40 from the field, 24% from three. February, 40 from the field, 34% from three. And then March, about 40 from the field, 25 from three. So, it's, you know, it's just up and down, man. It's just been up and down for Josh Hart. But I would think, you know, I would say February was, was certainly his best month. And it had to be because that was when Julius Randle, Julius Randle went down in January. I believe January 18th was the date of the uh, of the Randle injury. And that's pretty much from there on where Josh Hart really had to assert himself as a shot creator and as a scorer. That's to Jay Martin 05. He says, you, uh, do you have your eye on any Knicks prospects in March Madness? Yeah, we're going to do a whole show on, uh, on March Madness and talk about some of the key prospects and, and some of the key talent for the Knicks to keep an eye on because uh, the Knicks do have two draft picks in the upcoming draft. The Dallas pick is getting ready to convey this year. And so right now, if we look at it on Tankathon, 
They have the 18th pick and the 23rd. So that's cool. You know, get in there and get uh, maybe get some center depth in the event that, that you lose I or you got to trade Mitch. Is it a stretch five? That would be nice. More wing depth, absolutely. You know, two, three hybrid, three, four hybrid. I think that would be great for them. More defense and more shooting. See if they can catch a diamond in the rough. Jigga Man Porter went hard is on and not tired. Great Gulu guy. Tired and shot off. Hard hate to say it's a liability. Yeah, that is a tricky dynamic with Josh Hart. I, I can't remember a player like on the Knicks that had that type of polarizing impact, you know, for the, on the positive and on the negative. I, 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 I can't remember where, like, when they're on, they're great for this team. And when they're off, it's tough. Because even at full strength, he has to be the glue guy. He has to be the sixth man. So, you know, whether Julius and, and, and OJ are there or not, Josh Hart is still a vital part of this team. He's, a, he's one of the guys that Tibbs trusts the most. So he's going to be a factor in closing time. Because he can do so many things. He can play make. He can play tough. He can play physical. He can play defense. He, he can um, rebound. Best rebounding guard in the game. But yeah, I really can't think. I really can't think of a Nick that had that type of polarizing impact. So we're just gonna have to see, man. We're just gonna have to see how we get it out the mud. CP the franchise here on the Bleach Report app. Back tomorrow for post game live. Knicks versus the Sacramento Kings. We will have a play by play live tomorrow as well. Big game, as we said. Knicks coming up, going up against that uh, that Kings team, and when we look at the standings in the West, and take a look at what the Kings got going on right now, the Kings are in that playing hunt. They're right there at number seven. They're playing team, but you got the Suns right there, tied. The Lakers one and a half games back. Golden State, I think, is going to be probably right that You know, Golden State's not going to catch Sacramento. And then Sacramento, they're trying to, I'm sure they're trying to get out of the play in territory there. And they're one game back of fifth. They're one game back in the Bash for fifth. I'm not sure who has the tiebreaker there between Sacramento and the Mavericks, but I say that to say they're going to be coming in number one for revenge against the Knicks and number two also on that grind. For the final stretch. So tomorrow's going to be a tough game. Between Fox, a bonus. Knicks better be ready to play. And then after that, it's all it's off to the road you go. So they got to hold on. So to everybody in the chat, like I said, man, we'll be back tomorrow for play-by-play -play live as well as post-game live. For you guys on the Bleacher Report app, make sure you follow us on YouTube, especially YouTube.com. Slash Knicks Fan TV. Share this video. Share the YouTube.com slash Knicks Fan TV link with your fellow Knicks fan, man. Let's keep building this community. It was a great, great atmosphere down here in Florida, just bringing all the people together and uh, coming to a city near you, man. Great job by everybody who came through and just the power of this community that Knicks Fan TV is building. Truly unparalleled, unlike any other. Knicks fans are the greatest in the world, man. I, I say that all the time. Shout out Molly Mall 718. Shout out to Molly Mall. So, yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah. Check us out on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Same thing at Knicks Fan TV. Also on uh, Twitter and Instagram at CP the Franchise, man. Follow my personal uh, Instagram and Twitter as well. CJ, one of the playoff theme results dropping. We got to check. We got to check. I, I'm going to get to the poll in just a minute. But yeah, playoff rollout. We got the playoff merch coming up. Watch parties coming up going to be a busy busy time in this month of april for kftv so stay tuned for that we'll drop the announcement at some point today lopez 104 got to do something in dc and charlotte next year yeah i promise my people in the qc charlotte absolutely we're getting down there orlando 
I did say Orlando, hey, could be could be this year in Orlando based on how the playoff matchups look right now. And uh, D.C. definitely, definitely got to do a D.C. trip and just, just head up and down uh, the East Coast and tap in with the family. Frex Sinatra, put him in the trunk. Ishan Aru, put him in the trunk. Salute, salute, man. So that's the story, guys. I'll tap in with you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Salute to Knicks Nation once again. TP the franchise. I'm out of here, man.